This is the 2024 Honda CRV Hybrid Sport Touring. Is it the best hybrid crossover SUV? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm at Holmes Honda to fulfill a request. I do try and fulfill requests on the videos on the vehicles all of you want to see. Sometimes I can get it done, sometimes I can't. Sometimes it takes a long time, as was the case here with this particular model because somebody requested this exact vehicle, this trim and this exterior color. So if you want to know more about it, check out the link down in the description of the video to the Holmes Honda website. And you will find that this model is all wheel drive. As far as our lighting goes, we have LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. Now there are no fog lights on any of these CRVs. Tell Honda down in the comments if you would like to see them maybe add fog lights for 2025, something along those lines. And the finishes here on the front end, I think it's a nice balance because you have gloss black with your upper grille. You've got some silver trim down in this area right here. You also have chrome for the Honda logo and you have some flat black as well. We'll also find our active air curtains right here that allow air to flow through the front end. That's gonna help with aerodynamics and that means improved gas mileage. And what about your safety features? Honda Sensing, Adaptive Cruise Control, Collision Mitigation Braking, Lane Keeping Assist, Road Departure Mitigation, Traffic Jam Assist, all of that is going to be here. And as I said, this is an all-wheel drive model. What are the tire and wheel sizes? Well, we're looking at 235 on our width, a 65 series sidewall wrapped around the 19 inch wheels. Those come in gloss black. I think that fits here quite nicely. The gloss black mirror caps, turn signal indicators built in. Now these are manually folding side view mirrors. Something else that would be interesting to see an answer to from some of you. Would you like to see a power folding function for the CRV, especially on this top trim level. Now this isn't part of Honda sensing, but it is here with your side view mirrors. You're gonna have the blind spot information system or what a lot of us call blind spot monitoring. Those are heated and they're also power adjustable. There is the remote, give you a good look at that. It does have remote start, very compact remote, easy to deal with. That's a good thing. You have the walk away feature. It's a proximity key. All of those features that I know a lot of you are looking for are going to be here on this trim level. Roof rails, body colored shark fin antenna. You'll also find the rear roof spoiler. It looks nice. It's also functional in allowing air to flow over the rear window as you drive down the road. That helps to keep this area clean. You also have a rear window wiper for when it's not clean or if you need to get water off of it when it's raining. All wheel drive logo here. You know that this is a hands-free tailgate right here. We'll talk about that a little more in just a bit. LED taillights will finish things off. We have our CRV and touring logos down here. And we'll also have the, or excuse me, CRV and hybrid logos. Sport and touring will be over here on the right hand side, getting a little bit ahead of myself. And one thing I have to say I do like here, even though these are not active exhaust outlets, I like the fact that they're here because it just gives what I think is an appropriate look to the rear of this CRV instead of just having a regular bumper back here. For some people, they like that. They'll say that's a clean look. Personally, I like having those outlets, even if they're not active. For those of you who say, Tom, I'm not interested in a turbocharged engine. What are my options? Well, you're going to have to go hybrid if you want a 2024 CRV. This is the only drivetrain you will find. A two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder mated to the dual electric motors, combined 204 horsepower, torque comes in at 207, or excuse me, 247, let's put the four in there, pounds feet, it is mated to an ECVT. Let's take a look at what the real purpose of a hybrid powertrain is, and that's going to be gas mileage. How good is it? What do you think about this? Here's what we have, 40 city, 34 highway, 37 combined, and 2.7 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. You do have capitalist fuel fill, and if you're curious, your gas tank size is 14 gallons. And let's talk about the tailgate back here. Now there's two different ways you can actually use the hands-free function. You're really meant to just kick your foot under the bumper like that, and the door will open. 
Some people swipe their foot across. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It works either way, so don't worry about it. Some people just find one way to be easier than the other. Now, let's see what we have here cargo space-wise. 36.6 to 76.5 cubic feet. You will find that you have a little less cargo space here than you will with a non-hybrid CRV because of everything located here underneath the floor. Now, you don't have a spare tire, you will have a tire repair kit. Just something to be knowing ahead of time, we'll say. And cargo lighting as well as your 12 volt power outlet right here. Cargo lighting on both sides. We also have the bag hangers on both sides. And as you can see, here's how things look when the seats are folded flat. And you can use the button right here to change the height. All you do is pull or move the tailgate to wherever you want it to be. I'm gonna open it all the way, hold it down, listen for the beeps and I've changed the height successfully. Now, if you come back here and this rear door, the tailgate does not open, you can actually go into your infotainment screen and there will be a setting you need to change to turn that on. Not a big deal, pretty easy to figure out. I'll try and remember to show that to you when we hop into the driver's seat shortly. And let's take a look at what your rear seat passengers are going to find in case they're watching today's video. A comfortable armrest, I think that does the job. Plenty of room right there. Now you do have a black interior here, but you have some orange contrast stitching to help break things up a little bit. I think all of the trim and everything being gloss black right here is appropriate because that's not an area that will necessarily fingerprint up a lot. That's one thing gloss black or piano black is known for. The door bins are fairly large. There is a lot of space back here in the rear seating area. We have the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. And as you can see, there is how the seats recline. A lot of people ask about that, so you can recline these seats back here in the second row. We'll find one rear seat pocket on the passenger side and right down here, the gold that a lot of people are searching for in the back seat of their CRVs, air conditioning vents, and a couple of USB options. I still wonder why we don't see three USB options because, well, you have, three options for seats back here, three places for people to sit. So that would make sense to have three USB options. Just a note that I always pick up on. We will have our latch system. I think that's nice because for those of you who have kids that are still in car seats, you don't have to remove anything or get anything out of the way. They're exposed, they're easy to gain access to. Another thing that I'd like to get your feedback on do you like the conventional size sunroof that is here? Let me get up here and open that, open the shade. Would you like to see a panoramic sunroof option? Everybody has their opinions, and if you want to know what mine is, I actually like having no sunroof at all, just my personal preference. So what if you came into Holmes Honda and you bought this CRV Hybrid Sport Touring? What would it cost you? $42,005. If you come in and you need some help, I promise to give you the $5. That way you're guaranteed everything's going to work out. So just let me know. Armrest here on the passenger side front door, as you would expect, a little larger. We also have a larger door bin. Pretty much the same look with materials and trim and all that for this front door, just like we had with the rear. Now with the seats, driver and passenger will both be power adjustable. They'll both be heated and very comfortable. And we move into the interior and take a quick look at what we have with the trim continuing its way across. There is some more of that gloss black, but again, I think it's in a good place where it's not going to be touched a lot, fingerprinting it up, anything like that. Within the glove box, I like to call this the wheel lock key box because that's usually what we find in here instead of gloves. So we might have to rename that. I might have to talk to somebody about doing that officially. What do you think? Here's your 12 volt power outlet, your USB options, and yes, you do have a wireless charging pad. There's almost enough room in here for Honda to put in two wireless charging pads. They could maybe widen this area and do that. What do you think? Conventional style shifter, here's your drive mode selector, hill start assist, power parking brake, brake hold mode, your cup holders, and your center console. The lid doubling as an armrest, it might stand to be a little bit higher, but I don't know. Some people could use it this way, depending on where your seat is set height-wise, 
well, that will determine how that works for you. But one way or another, it's definitely usable and definitely gets the job done. Now, this little tray right here is removable, or you can put it into two different places. You can leave it out, and there is the interior of the center console. A reasonable amount of space within. We'll also find here on the upper console, let's get back here just a little bit, there is your sunglass holder, and you'll have the control right here for your sunroof, which does tilt and slide open, as you can imagine, but sometimes it's good to go ahead and share that anyway. And here's a tip. In case your passenger in the front seat says, what kind of CRV is this? Is it hybrid or non-hybrid? Well, all you have to do to answer their question is point right here to the steering column. And there we go with the intro with the animated graphics, a little bit of music playing, just to show you what's here with this model. I'm going to get that film off of the screen, the protector right there, just so it's easier for you to see. Now, nothing unusual here as far as your controls go on the driver's side door. You can see what all is here. Everything for your windows. You can lock or unlock all four windows, door locks, and controls for your side view mirrors. Now, you do have two settings for seat memory. That's only here on the driver's side but it is here. You can turn traction control on and off right here. You can open and close your power tailgate right there. The lever right here allows you to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. You just drop that lever and then you can take care of that. And here is your digital dash that by the way, you can customize the look of this to a great degree depending on what you might want to do. I'm not gonna take the time to show all of that, but if you wanted to, well, you could do that. I actually have a video where I show how to do that. It's dedicated to that exact thing. And navigation. Now, what you'll get there is basically just a compass. If you need to see what direction you're going, well, that is there. Steering wheel mounted controls are here. And these are not paddle shifters. Some people might see those and assume that's what they are. They're actually for controlling regenerative braking, in case you're curious about that. Over here on the left-hand side of the steering column, we're going to have the control for our lighting on the exterior of the vehicle and our turn signals. Hopefully you use those. It helps a lot of people and keeps people from wondering which direction you're going or where you're going or what you're doing. Right here, well, people know what you're doing with your windshield wipers because they can see when they're on and off because you actually use this lever more than you use the lever over there. Well, some of you, not all of you, I know that. So before anybody leaves any comments and says, I do use my blinkers, Tom, I'm not one of those people who doesn't. So, Here's something that's interesting. When I do videos on the 2023 or 2024 Pilot, the biggest screen currently available there is nine inches. That's what we have right here. Some people say it's too small for the Pilot. What do you think about the CRV? It seems to fit well here. I think it's maybe a little more appropriate size-wise. Would you like to see something bigger? What are your thoughts? Very easy to use, easy to figure out, easy to learn. And you do have built-in navigation if you want to use that. But if that's not what you want to use, you can always use your smartphone and your favorite app on your smartphone. You have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So all of that is there. And here's vehicle settings. I told you I was going to show you this earlier. What happens if your power tailgate does not open? You're going to come right here and if it's not opening, hands-free access function is likely set to off. That's all you probably need to do. No big deal. It's super simple to deal with. We will find our rear view camera. There are three different views here, and it looks like it's not very clear. The sun shining directly into that is affecting that just a little bit. If you haven't seen the 23 or 24 or even 2025 now, Honda Pilot's the Elite and Trail Sport models have a button right here on the windshield wiper control that allows you to bring up all the different camera views. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. But you have multiple camera views, including a front view camera, cameras in your side view mirrors, and several other cameras. Would you like to see something like that made available here on these CRVs? I'm curious to know. Dual zone climate control, you can sync those together, pretty easy to deal with. And there's how you control the three stages of your heated seats. And let's take a look at our driving modes. We're going to have normal. That's going to be your default mode. Let's see if I can get over here and give you a better view without the glare. Well, kind of hard to do, but I think you can still see it. Econ and snow. With all-wheel drive, that's great to have because it's ideal for that situation. 
We'll also have sport mode. Okay, we're going to get out on the road for our test drive here with the CRV Hybrid Sport Touring. Definitely an enjoyable SUV to drive, crossover SUV, a comfortable ride quality. And when you're in sport mode, you might be surprised at how well it accelerates. I'm not going to tell you it's what I call neck snapping performance, but it allows you to definitely get down the road when you need to with absolutely no problem. So when you need to get up to speed to merge into traffic on the interstate or any highway where traffic is moving at a higher rate of speed, you need to kind of get above that a little bit, dropping hints for some of you drivers that don't do that or just pass a slower moving vehicle, whatever the case is, or race a Mustang. We're not going to do that today. I wouldn't win anyway, not with that one. <laughs> but one way or another, you definitely have that nice combination of a comfortable ride quality and plenty of acceleration. Now, I guess the Mustang driver wanted to say, I beat a Honda CRV Hybrid Sport Touring. I blew them off the road. You never know what's going through their mind. The speed limit here is 55, by the way. I probably need to slow down a little bit. They're going a lot more than that. <laughs> you just never know what you're going to encounter on these roads out here. It's always fun to see what comes up and what I can say about it. Plenty of room here. That's a fact. Plenty of interior room for the front seat and back there in the rear seating area. Now, I can't really tell you what the ride quality would be like back there because, well, I haven't ridden back there. I have to assume that it's still really comfortable. Typically, the further back you get, the less comfortable it can be in some vehicles, but I think here it's going to be just fine. It's one thing that I really like is the nice balance of a very comfortable ride quality, plenty of technology, and if we're racing to the stripe right here, guess what? I just beat the Mustang. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. And listen, did you hear that? You didn't hear hardly anything. And that's because of that nice smooth ride quality. Those railroad tracks back there, depending on what you're driving, you really know if they are there, or in this case, you really don't. It was a very smooth experience driving over those. That's a good thing. And besides plenty of room here for the driver, the passenger in the front seat, and your rear seat passengers, you obviously have a reasonable amount of cargo capacity. And I liked the fact that the technology here is nothing difficult to deal with. That's always a good thing because I know there's still a lot of people out there who don't necessarily have experience with this technology. And sometimes it can be a little scary to think about, man, am I going to use all of that? How hard is it going to be to learn? Depending on the vehicle that you're driving, there are some vehicles out there, not Hondas necessarily, but other makes of vehicles they do have a more difficult infotainment system and different technologies that are difficult to use, but it's really not the case here, and I like that. That's always a good thing. So for those of you who are maybe saying, Tom, I'm, I'm a little leery of stepping into these newer vehicles just because I'm still driving my 1990 Honda Accord. It has upwards of 1 million miles on it, and it's doing just fine. That would not be a surprise to have somebody drop a comment like that. But I know it's time for a new vehicle. I'd like a crossover SUV, and I really like those new CRV hybrids, but I'm just not sure about that technology. Not a big deal. In fact, here's what I would recommend if you're that person, whether it's with a CRV or whatever it is, go into a dealership, get in the vehicle. Let someone on the sales staff walk you through the process of using it, what it can do, how to pair your smartphone, all of that. And I guarantee you, you'll find that it's a lot easier to use than you think, and you'll probably use a lot more of it than you think. So tell me what you think about the 2024 Honda CRV Hybrid Sport Touring. Besides being a mouthful to say, do you think it's the best hybrid crossover SUV? Tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments section. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this model for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. That way you don't miss any future videos. Tell me what future videos you might want to see. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.